praise the Lord somebody, wherever we are this minute, um, I just want us to begin to appreciate God for His awesomeness, His kindness, His goodness and His favor. Our God has been good to us, wherever you are this minute, just appreciate Him for being God. Appreciate Him for being King. He has been a good Father. He has been a good God. The one that has spared our lives from time past till now. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praises, all that is due to his name. So wherever you are this minute, just appreciate God. Give God all the glory that he deserves because our God is worthy of our praise. Our God is worthy of our worship. He alone deserves it all. This minute, thank him for his faithfulness, for his kindness, for his goodness, for how he has spared your life, for how he has spared our lives, for the church, for your families, for your loved ones. Our God has been good. He has been so sufficient for us. He has been so sufficient for us. The Bible says, my grace is sufficient. He has made it so available for us. So this minute, begin to appreciate him. Thank him for last week, for last week's Bible. We didn't have Bible study last week, yeah. So thank him for last week's service, which was held on Friday, or last week's Bible study. Thank him for giving you the ability to be here today. It's only by his might, it's only by his strength, and it's only by his power. So thank him because he alone deserves it. Father, we appreciate you, oh God. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. We say, let your name alone be exalted. Because you are God, because you are King, because you are Yahweh. You are the one that has spared us till, from time past till today. We say, let your name be exalted, Father. Let your name be magnified, O God. Let your name be glorified, O God, in the name of Jesus. Even as we come tonight, O God, to hear your word, we ask you, Lord, to speak to us. Speak to us in a language we understand. Speak to us in, in, in a setting, O God, that we will flow with you, Father. Every mind is different. As faces are different, so our minds are different. Our memories and understandings are different. Please speak to our hearts today, O God, that at the end, all glory, all honor will be ascribed unto you. In Jesus' excellent name we have prayed. Amen. I want to welcome us all once again to tonight's Bible study. I believe you have your Bibles with you, your pen, your books, because it's another time for us to learn at the master's feet. <clears throat> it's another beautiful time to learn at his feet. Amen. So today we're going to be looking at an interesting topic. An interesting topic that says spiritual gifts, identification and usage. Amen. Identification, how to know them. Usage, how to use it. Hallelujah. So wherever we are, um, we'll be taking our Bible passage from the book of Romans. <clears throat> Romans 12, 6 to 8. Romans 12, 6 to 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. And it says, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it is showing mercy, let him give it cheerfully. So now you know showing mercy is actually a gift of the Spirit. Amen. Somebody who doesn't have the Holy Spirit inside of him cannot show mercy. Amen. It is somebody who has accepted Christ, who knows Christ, who understands the person of Christ that can actually show somebody else mercy. Hallelujah. So that's our Bible passage. We'll be taking our memory verse from the book of 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4 verse 10. I don't know if we're together. 1 Peter 4 verse 10. We're going to take it together. It says, as every man had received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Hallelujah. As every man had received the gift, even so minister the same one to another 
as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As you have received the gift, it is not for you to keep it to yourself. Amen. It is not for you to hold it to yourself. It is not for you to enjoy it alone. You have to tell someone else about it. Hallelujah. It is definitely commendable for God's children to desire to know the spiritual gift given to them by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of service in the church and glorify God in the world. Now, there are three things here. The first one says, these gifts are given to you by the Holy Spirit. Amen. These gifts are given to you by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So I would like to take a break here. If you know you don't know Christ, today's topic might sound very strange for you. It might, you might not understand. Even, you have, even if you have a little understanding intellectually, you might not grasp the full understanding of what we're talking about tonight. So firstly, we have to do the right thing for you to come into the fold of Christ and then we can move on. So if wherever you are this minute, if you know you do not belong or if you know you've backslidden, if you know you were once in the faith and one or two things happened and then you went off or you went away, I would like to pray with you. I want you to close your eyes as we take this prayer together. Our God and Father, I know I have sinned against you. I know I have wronged you in time past. I know I have lived in the world. I know I have acted foolish. But Lord, tonight I'm asking you to come and be Lord over my life. I'm asking you to be Lord over my kingdom. I'm asking you to be Lord over my future. I'm asking you to come and take absolute preeminence over my destiny. For without you, I can do nothing. Come and reign as king. Come and cleanse me from every sin and iniquity, O oh God. That at the end of the day, I will be amongst those who say holy, holy to you in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' excellent name we have prayed. You are welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Now you belong to one of us. So now when we're talking about this, you have a full understanding of what we are talking about. Amen. You have a full understanding of every single thing we're talking about. So like I said, it is given to them, given to us by the Holy Spirit. And for the purpose of what? To serve the church, for your service in the church, and to glorify God in the world. Amen. For your service in the church, and to glorify God in the world. It is not for you to turn it into a merchandise. We see a lot of people today because they are, they are, given, they are given the gifts of prophesying. Because you are given the gift of healing. They turn it into a money-making machine. They use it for so many different things that they ought not to use it for. Amen. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord are without sorrow. Hallelujah. Saul was made king. And even when the spirit of the Lord had left him, even when the Lord's heart was on somebody else, he was still king. It didn't stop him from being king. Amen. So there are lots and lots of people today who operate with all the gifts given to them. But using it for so many things, the Lord isn't glorifying himself in. And it's totally, totally wrong. So if you have any of these gifts, whichever gift it is, it is meant for the kingdom of heaven. To bring men back to your maker and for the purpose of using it for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Paul was talking to Timothy. When a gift is given to you, I don't know if you remember the story of the talents that were given to the three servants. Amen. One of them hid it. You don't hide it. You stir it up. You use it. That is why it's given to you. It's not given to you for you to keep it. It's not given to you for you to fold it or for you to bury it. It's not given to you for you to sell it. Freely you are given. Freely you should give. Amen. Freely you are given. Freely it should be given. Hallelujah. Because the world out there needs it. Amen. And the Lord gave it to you for you to use it. The existence of a gift is a call to exercise it. Amen. You don't just skip it. You don't just bury it. You don't just let it lie down there. You can evangel. You can talk. Let me tell you, you are somebody who knows how to talk. Use it for the kingdom. Go out and tell somebody about Jesus. If you know you can talk 30 minutes straight, you don't get tired. Use it for the kingdom. Amen. You have a lovely voice. Use it for the kingdom. 
Hallelujah. The best thing you can do for yourself and the best thing you can do for your generation is to use the gift God has given to you to bring men back to him. The devil is working over time. We shouldn't relent. Amen. We shouldn't relent. As much as he's working, so you should be working as well. Amen. Therefore, Apostle Paul advised Timothy, neglect not the gift that is in you. 1 Timothy 4, 14. Don't throw it away. Don't ignore it. Don't, don't, don't just do it anyhow. Cherish it. Amen. Cherish it. The gift you have, there are so many people out there who look at you and sometimes wish they have seen. So cherish it. Use it for God's kingdom. That at the end of the day, his name will be glorified. And at the end of the day, his name will be magnified. That is when you are using it wisely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we'll be looking deep into the outlines. We'll be looking at identifying your spiritual giftedness. Amen. The first outline we'll be looking at identifying your spiritual giftedness. It can be accomplished in various ways. How do you identify it? How do you know there's, there's, there's some way you are so gifted in? Amen. Effective fervent prayers is very vital because the one who knows exactly how you are spiritually gifted is the gift giver himself, which is the Holy Spirit. You pray. What, when you pray, what do you do? You communicate. You ask questions. You're confused. You ask questions. I feel one of, one of the potent questions Christians ask today is, Lord, what is my purpose? Why am I called? Why, why am I here? The Lord did not create anybody empty. He created us for specific purposes. Amen. He created each and every person. Today you're in the body of Christ. You could be the leg. Another person could be the eyes. Another person could be the lips. What does it tell you? We are all useful. Nobody is a waste. Amen. Nobody, absolutely nobody is a waste. Let me, let me marvel you. You've been in church for 20 years. And you don't function anywhere. You're not growing. I'll be real with you. You're not growing. Should I surprise you also? There's COVID. We're not going to church. But still, you don't do anything. When it's time for you to come for Bible study, you're nowhere to be found. When it's time for you to share the word of God, right now while we are here, you are watching right now. The single share you share it, it opens this message to the world of some other person to listen and learn. That makes you an evangelist itself. Why? You are sharing the word of God. You might be in your bedroom, but you are actually sharing the word of God. So if you have been in the church for so long, for so, so long, and you don't function anyway, you don't do anything, you are only wasting time. And you are doing what you are neglecting, the gift of God that has been given to you. Today, don't neglect it. You can actually start right now by sharing this message amen share it allow somebody hear about the word of god allow somebody else enjoy what you're enjoying allow somebody else see what you're seeing hallelujah so effective fervent prayer is very very vital you can ask him to show you how you are gifted in order to better use your spiritual gift for his glory okay now i know the lord has called me to be an evangelist so now how do i go about it it is the same Holy Spirit that tells you how to go about it. It is the same Holy Spirit who showed you what your gift is that will also lead you through how to use it. Amen. I want us to look at Luke 11 verse 9. Luke 11 verse 9. And it says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Hallelujah. Like I said one time, any Christian that tells me when they pray, the Lord does not answer them. I don't think so. I think when you pray, the Lord answers. But the thing is, our world is so busy that we don't have time to listen. We're so busy that the place is so noisy that even when the Lord is speaking, you are hearing so many voices. You can't tell which is what. Amen. So ask him. When you ask him, he listens to you and he will definitely answer Ask and it shall be given. The Bible says he is not a son of man that he should lie. And the Bible says when, it, when his words go out, they don't return to him void. So if it says ask and it shall be given, he means it. Amen. You lack, you don't know where to get it from. James, James tells us that you should ask him who gives to you liberally. Desire it, you want it. Ask him, Lord, 
where do I fit in? Some of us here, some people, they don't actually know where they fit in. It's either they feel they don't have this or they don't have that or they don't have this. Listen, as long as you have a mouth, you really don't know how to sing, that's fine. As long as you can speak, go out there and evangelize Christ. You are an evangelist. Amen. You are an evangelist. You are a minister. You have your mouth. Use it to talk about Jesus. Okay, you can't speak. You have your hands. You are now online. Share the page. Type something about Christ on your Facebook page. You have Instagram. You have Twitter. Use it for the kingdom. Every single Christian is gifted. Yes. You have, as long as the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, he equips you. Amen. He makes you strong. He brings you out there. He gives you all you need for life and the kingdom. Hallelujah. For his glory. So, ask him. And it will be given unto you. Amen. The second one says confirmation from others also gives light to your spiritual giftedness. Other people who see you serving the Lord can often identify a special gift in use that you might take for granted or not even recognize. Amen. There are people around you. You have your pastors. You have those in the church around you who look at you and tell you, my brother, I notice you are gifted in this thing. I notice you're this kind of person that when you talk to people, people listen to you. I notice you're this kind of pe person that whenever you want to help somebody, there's a smile on your face. You're good at smiling. I think you should be in the ushering department. You have a lovely voice. Oh God, you sing so well. Don't you think this is your gifting? Don't you think you should ask God? Confirmation from others. Hallelujah. First Timothy 4.14 Do not neglect the gift that is given to you, which was given to you by what? Prophecy. The prophecy came from who? The Lord spoke to the minds of his servants, and the servant told you, Hey, brother, the Lord is saying, this is what you'll be doing in his house. The Lord is saying, this is what you'll be doing in his kingdom. The Lord is saying, this is, this is where you're gifted. You should use it. With the laying on of hands of who? The eldership in the church. So has somebody told you something? Have they told you you're good at writing? Have they told you you're good at singing? Have they told you you're good at doing one thing or the other? Don't take it for granted. Amen. Do not take it for granted. In addition, you can carry out a self-test on yourself. There are questions you can ask yourself as pointers to your spiritual gifts. There are questions like, what spiritual activity do I enjoy doing? Do you enjoy talking? Do you enjoy even drama? Do you enjoy acting? Amen. I'm trying to imagine a world where Michael Jackson was using his gift for the kingdom. Amen. Look at the world today. Almost half the people in the world today, if not more than half, love Michael Jackson. So imagine all the people who follow Michael Jackson were actually in the kingdom of God. Think about it. Imagine Michael Jackson was part of Hillsong. Or imagine Michael Jackson was actually a chorister in your church. Imagine what happens to his followers. Amen. These, all these people will definitely come to God. Why? Because of one's man, one, one man's gifting. Amen. So ask yourself these questions. What ministry in my life is God blessing? Like I said earlier, you smile a lot. You see, whenever you pray for people, you hear things happen. Whenever you sing, you see the presence of the Lord come down. You see a lot of things happen when you do things. What is the Holy Spirit telling or prompting me to do? He tells you to do things part time. What is he, what is he prompting or telling me to do? Don't ignore it. I want us to look at 1 Corinthians 7 verse 20. It says, let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Has the Lord called you to sing? Remain there. Amen. Amen. When you appreciate your gift, you don't compare yourself with somebody else. When you appreciate your gift, you don't compete. You don't compare. You get satisfied where you are, which is why I feel it's good to ask the Lord. If the Lord has spoken to you, if he has told you, this is what you should do. This is what I want. There's somebody, I heard of a story of a lady who the Lord asked to get into the balloon business. Balloon. She got into it and she's doing so well. There are some people who have been doing balloon business for so many years and nothing. Has the Lord called you to clean the church? Has the Lord called you to do this or to do that? Do it with all your heart. You know why? That is where your blessing lies. 
Amen. Because you're not taking your gifting. You, you've, there's a prompting upon your heart that the Lord is asking you to do. You've taken it. You're doing it all of your soul. You are not doing it because you're expecting God to bless you. You are doing it because you find fulfillment in it. Amen. Listen to those little things. They are the things that matter. They are the things that will set you before kings and not mere men. They are the things that will place you up and not beneath. Hallelujah. So don't take, don't take these things for granted. Amen. Don't take them for granted. They are useful. Do not take them for granted. So like we know, it's a Bible study. So I have our first assignment for us. Amen. The first assignment is I want you to go back after the Bible study. I want you to sit down and think, mention the spiritual gifts you have identified in your life since you surrendered your life to Christ. Amen. I want you to go back, write it down, mention the spirit. Maybe we should start from there. For those of us who are still confused about our gifting, who still don't know what it is, sit down, ask yourself, look at your life from when you gave your life to Christ till today. I want you to write down those spiritual giftings you have identified in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So the second outline talks about the effective use of spiritual gifts. Amen. We've looked at how to identify them. Now we're going to look at how to use them. It is not just knowing it. How do we go about it? Amen. Anybody can pick up a spanner, but not know how to use it. Anybody can pick up a, a baking pan, but not know how to use it. Hallelujah. You could know how to talk, but you can be talking nonsense. Amen. So instead of knowing what you should know or knowing the giftings you have, it's better we should also know how to use it effectively. There's a difference between knowing how to use something and knowing how to use it effectively. Hallelujah. Every Christian is given at least a gift at conversion. Amen. Which is why I told those of us who were not in Christ that before we proceed, we should go to our maker first. So because we understand that there's a gift given to you. See, when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person's life, like I said, you don't stay empty. There's a blessing that comes upon your life. Even if you don't understand what it is, that is where the place of asking him comes in. Amen. There's a blessing that comes upon your life. There's a gift. There's a, there's a portion of gift that comes upon your life. You now have to stay it. You don't remain a baby forever. If previously you were praying for 30 seconds, you grow so well to pray for one minute. You grow so well to pray for five minutes. Like that you grow. Amen. Ephesians 4, 7. Ephesians 4, 7. It says... But to each one of us, grace was given. Her amen. Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts, of his abundant gifts. Amen. Because he gave to you richly. Hallelujah. So something was given to you. As you manage well your initial gifts, and as your ministry expands, you may ask God for other gifts under the direction and promptings of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You can ask for it. You can desire it. There's a place in the Bible that says we should endlessly desire the best gift. I think that's 1 Corinthians 21, 31, 31a. 1 Corinthians 21, 31a. You should endlessly desire it. Amen. Ask for it. You know how to pray right now. And you know to where that one beautiful thing with evangelism is. As you're going out to talk to people, you should first do your homework at home before you go out to talk to people. Amen. You should first pray before you go out to talk to people. They go hand in hand. One can stay without the other. So while you go out to pray, while you go out to talk to people, you should first pray. Prayer should be what leads you on. Amen. It's something you need to know. It's something you need to have with you at all times. Every gifted person has a proper function in the body of Christ. Yes, you have a function. You're not given a gift. You're not made an usher to just sit at home and do nothing. Hallelujah. It's COVID period. We don't have any physical church. You are an usher. How are you using your gift? It's a question you should ask yourself. You know, a lot of people feel, okay, there's COVID. We're not meeting physically. Uh, there's nothing for me to No, there's something for you to do. There's absolutely something for you to do. Okay, fine. There's nowhere for you to call people, gather people together. This is the time for you to ask the Lord for the gift of evangelism. This is the time for you to desire the gift of speaking. So you can use it. So you can be functional. Hallelujah. That is how you, pro you use it. You use it well. You don't just sit back at home and then you do nothing. And then you, you are good at using technology, right? Good. 
Find a way to get people, okay, WhatsApp is not working, you know about Telegram. You find a way to get people together to make sure they are studying the word of God each day. You are using your gift effectively. Hallelujah. Okay, they said we should not go out and, to, and tell people about Jesus. We, 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 we can't go out because of this, because of maybe the environment where you find yourself. Oh, good, you have your phone with you. Use your phones. Amen. So each gifted person has a proper function in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The legs are there for you to walk. The hands are there for you to clap. The face is there, your mouth, your lips, the eyes, everything is there. They are all functional. Amen. No gift is superior to others, but gifts differ in function. If you decide to walk today and your legs say, I'm not going anywhere. Do you know literally you can actually stay at a position? You can't go anywhere. You won't go anywhere. If the hands cuckoo say, or the eyes says, I'm not, I, I refuse to open my eyes today. You can't see. So we all need one another. Amen. We all need one another. You can't do without the other. Hallelujah. We all definitely need one another. I want us to look at 1 Corinthians 12, 20 to 25. 1 Corinthians 12, 20 to 25. As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be the weaker are indispensable. Hallelujah. They are indispensable. You can't do without them. Amen. You cannot do without them. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable bodies need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. Amen. So that there should be no division in the body. Hallelujah. This is why you should not be comparing. Today you hear a lot of things in the church. You hear the pastors being jealous of a young minister. Or you hear the ushers being jealous of the choir. Or you hear the... No, you shouldn't do that. When you do that, you despise the gift in God has given to you. Amen. You despise the gift. Choristers in the house. Some of you feel, oh, I don't know how to roll my tongue. I don't know how to hit the roof. Listen. Have you listened to Mesichimo? Amen. Have you listened to Donnie? There are people whose voices are gone. But when they sing here, you feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. You feel the glory of the Lord everywhere. You have a gift. Use it. Do not compare yourself. You are unique where you are. Amen. You are unique where God has placed you. So be glad for the gifting you have and use it so joyfully. Hallelujah. Because it is in your it is in you be, taking out your gift effectively that your blessings will come. Amen. No one believer has all the gifts, so we need one another. Hmm. Amen. No one believer has all the gifts. First Corinthians 12, 28 to 30. First Corinthians 12, 28 to 30. And in the church, God has appointed first, first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also, those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues, are all, are all prophets, are all apostles, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have giftings of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the greater gifts. Hallelujah. Not one person has all of it. You can't share yourself. Amen. Think about it. Inside the eye, you don't have leg. Inside your nose, you don't have eyes. Inside your mouth, you don't have ears. In your ears, you don't have legs. Amen. You are unique. Whatever gifting you have, it's unique to whatever situation of life, to where God has called you to be. Hallelujah. So we all need one another. Amen. We all need one another. I can't do without you. You can't do without me. We need one another. Amen. No man is an island. This is the more reason why you shouldn't seclude yourself from online service. Amen. This is why you shouldn't just sit at home. You are at home. All you just need to do is pick up your phone and connect. That's all. Amen. 
And because you are connecting, and some other person sees you connecting, they would also connect. Oh, it said it's on. Yes, service is on. You can connect now. Oh, do you have the link? Oh, I don't have the link. I'm sorry. Okay, this is the link. Oh, what's the name of the church? That is how the news spread abroad. And that is how somebody comes to Christ. Amen. If somebody did not tell you about Christ, maybe you too today, you won't be here. You won't know him. You won't enjoy what you're enjoying. You won't have an understanding of his person. If somebody had not used their gifts, you will not be here enjoying the person of Christ today. So please, don't, don't, don't keep it all to yourself. Amen. Spiritual gifts are given to edify, to build up other believers. Hallelujah. They are there to build up other believers. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14, 12. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 12. So it is, so it is with you. Since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that build up the church. Amen. It is there to edify the church, to promote growth, unity, and peace, and love, to assist in the care of one another. Hallelujah. I don't know what's happening since Friday, even my pastor spoke about it. About assisting one another. About caring for one another. Amen. We should be there for one another. That is, that is where the, your spiritual gifts stand in. Don't just sit around. Don't, don't just sit like it doesn't concern you. It's none of your business. Anyhow, anybody wants to live their life, they should live their No, 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 no. It concerns you. Amen. It really concerns you. You should, because the Bible tells us to be our brother's keeper. Hallelujah. So it should concern you. Have you called someone today? Have you told somebody about Jesus today? Have you encouraged somebody today? What are you doing? I am acknowledging you right now to do it. Don't just keep your gifts and lying. Oh, because there's no physical church for one year. For, you want to tell me for one year you have not told somebody about Jesus? Oh my God. It is, I don't know. It is, I would say it's impossible for a Christian not to tell someone about Jesus. Simply because there's no physical building. Don't allow the physical building to deceive you. The church is you and I. Amen. The person you need to care for is you and I. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 verse 16. Ephesians 4 16 says, from, from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The Torah of Babel, the Bible said that the Lord said, if we leave these people, they will come up to heaven. Why? They have one tongue. They have one understanding. They have one language. This person puts his hand, the other person puts his hand. They held themselves together. Let me tell you, when people stay strong together, nothing, it is very hard for you to break that bond. Hallelujah. So when we come together to promote growth, unity, and love, if you are among those people who stay and gossip in the church, stop it. You are not giving that gifting. It is not part of the gifting of the Holy Spirit. No. If you are in a garden where people are talking about somebody else and you are all believers in Christ, do something different. Amen. Don't promote it. Promote love. The Bible says we should, we should give correction in love. You can correct somebody without having to castigate them or make them feel so terrible about themselves. If it's something you need to judge, judge it in love. Amen. The Bible says the Lord chastises the one he loves. So use your giftings right, hallelujah, to assist in the caring of one another. You know, you have, and you can spare, but you are so stingy. As a child of God, you shouldn't be stingy. No, it's not done. Hallelujah. Welcome others. Give if you have to give. Show love, because it, it's needed of you. Amen. And above all, to glorify God, especially in the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Especially in the ministry of the word. 1 Peter 4 verse 11. 1 Peter 4 verse 11. And it says, If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The Bible says when you are given to the poor, you know you are given to the Lord. 
when you are giving to somebody who does not have it's not the time for you to carry your phone out and start videoing or it's not the time for you to come out and give testimony of how you help brother john of how you help sister mary it makes no sense amen especially in the ministry of the word share the word to somebody today you can't be stingy with that as well no you shouldn't be tell somebody about jesus today it won't cost you anything it won't cost you anything. Tell somebody about the love of Christ. Tell somebody that God loves them. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. By hearing what? By hearing the word of God. It's a seed. When you tell somebody that, hey, today you meet somebody, tell the person God loves you. Tomorrow you meet the person, tell the person God loves you. Next tomorrow God loves you. I bet you, you are sowing a seed in that person's heart. Even if they decide not to, to accept it at that moment, when they go back home, something happens. There's something my kid sister always does whenever she offends me. Whenever I'm so angry at her and I'm shouting, I'm talking and there's something she does that it's annoying. Somebody's angry at you and the next thing she says is, sis, I love you. I'm talking to you, I'm angry at you, you did something wrong. And the next thing you're telling me is, sis, I love you. You notice the next thing that happens is it kills everything inside of you. Amen. So share, 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 share. You don't know who is about committing whatever they want to commit. This world might be all they need. To pull through another day. Hallelujah. Glorify God, especially in your ministry. Identify your spiritual giftedness and start making use of it to the glory of God. Don't merchandise it. Don't sell it. Amen. If the Lord has blessed you with the gift of prophesying, don't use it and go and open church that they didn't send you. God didn't call you. You called yourself. You go and open church. You start something that it's going to wreck. Amen. Because God didn't destine it. He called you to serve where you are. Then serve where you are. And use your giftings right. Hallelujah. Faithful utilization of a gift brings increased effectiveness in the ministry. But failure to develop a gift curtails ministry. You won't go far. Always remind yourself of, of the talent. The people they gave the talent. The three of them. And remember what happened to the servant who hid his. What they gave to him was taken away from him. You don't want that to happen to you. Amen. So today, I, I, I just want to admonish us. Ask the Lord if, if, Lord, okay, I don't know. Help me, God. I want it. I want this. I want that. I want to use it for your glory. I saw a joke that said, Lord, somebody in Nigeria said, Lord, please send me to Canada. I want to preach the word for you. That's selfish. For that comedy, that's selfish. Start where you are. Start with your next door neighbor. Amen. Start with that person you see on the road that smokes every day, that drinks every day, that humanizes every day. Start with them. Start with your immediate environment. Hallelujah. Then growth will come. Amen. I want us to close our eyes and pray. And I want you to tell the Lord to help you to make profit with your gifts. Lord, help me to make profit with your gifts in me. Help me to make profit with your gifts in me. I don't just want to sit down and the gift is just there. Help me to make profit with the gift you have given me. There is a reason you have given me this gift you have given me, Lord. It's not just for me to sit down there and not do anything with it. Help me, God. If you've identified it, Lord, help me. I don't know how to use it. I, I, don't, I don't know the places to go to. I don't know the, the, the right audience to speak to. Actually, audience is everyone. Lord, help me. Number two prayer, Father, grant me the grace to identify and utilize your gifts in my life. Help me to identify these giftings, oh God. I don't, I, 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 okay, fine, I'm here. I've given my life to Christ. I don't know how to go about it. Lord, help me. Father, today we ask you, oh God, to help us. Help us identify these gifts and help us use it well. Help us to use it effectively, oh God, to the glory of your name. That at the end of the day, all glory, all honor, all adoration will be ascribed unto you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To you be all the glory, to you be all the honor. In Jesus' excellent name we have prayed. Amen and amen. As we all know, this is once again, for those of us who might have joined us, this is ROCCG Dominion Sanctuary International Parish. If you have the light, you want to express the gift of God upon your life in any department, we have um, the different department, the numbers to reach out to 
on the comment section you can just check the comment section or you can check our page for whatever department be useful today in the house of the lord don't just be an extra seat don't warm chairs use your gifting for the kingdom of heaven hallelujah and one more thing we're having the 79 marathon praise has kicked off you can actually check youtube or you could check any rccg page dove television actually for it and watch and be blessed and don't forget our friday service kicks off 7 10 a.m dubai time and 7 a.m nigerian time don't miss it it's always an awesome time in god's presence hallelujah and this coming friday we'll be having our thanksgiving service so please make sure you don't miss it once again happy new month and thank you for joining us today god bless you and have a wonderful evening have a lovely day see you next week god bless you bye